Yo, what is good, high performers and camp believers? Welcome to another episode of the Can't Believe I Made It podcast. I am your esteemed host and habit expert and high performance mentor, Desi Aveda. All right, so there's a couple things to celebrate. First and foremost, Black History Month. We got one extra day with a leap year, so we got 29 days of Black History Month. So for all of you, big, big, big shout out as we celebrate not only just the the really cool people that are doing some amazing things in the space as we elevate black voices. I just think it's, it's, I'm excited for this month for a lot of reasons, but one of the thing that has come up that I was, I was sort of what I've been doing with this podcast is really treating it more as monthly campaigns of bigger messages that I wanted to get across because for myself and my immense ADHD, uh, I need structure. I, I just, I sometimes I, I need it. And I think with this, with this podcast, and what I feel like I owe to this community is a little bit of structure. And so as I was sort of taking a look at elevating Black voices in the space and nutrition and wellness and also the self-development space, one of the, thing that, one of the things that came up over the past two weeks for me as I was just someone who continually you know, keeps an ear out for some of the trends that are going on and someone that stays in the science of what's going on in health and wellness there's two pieces that came up for me that I was like, you know what? I can't not talk about this. And what I wanted to do with our Rituals for Resilience episodes over this next two weeks is to create a two-part series about why I'm pissed off about this. And I think for me, looking at myself as a dietitian, a Latino dietitian, I understand the value of inclusion and the value of understanding that each and every one of us are different. And the one thing that I wanted to promote in 2024 is this new diet trend of actually accepting nuance because each and every one of us need it. We all come from different backgrounds. We have diff different conditioning. We have different genetics. We have different habits. We have different ways in which we choose to enact a trigger that happens in our life or what happens in our environment. There's just such a wide variety of nuance when it comes to creating health and creating health systems for people that there are two things that came up that, I, that just really pissed me off. The first thing is and for those who are avid football fans, we know over this past week, the 49ers were able to take down the Detroit Lions, and then the Kansas City Chiefs were able to take down the Baltimore Ravens. So we got a Chiefs and 49ers matchup upcoming here in the next week, uh, or for those that are going to listen to this a little bit later, uh, here in the next couple weekends, if you will, of competing in the Super Bowl. And one of the things that came up that absolutely just floored me was Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, was giving a, a celebratory message to his team. And what came from that was a, a lot of what they filmed was him talking to his team shirtless. And anyone who, <laughs> anyone who has been able to accept that time is undefeated, that change... <laughs> excuse me, is undefeated, has, has come to a point in their life where they probably aren't going to look the way that they looked like in high school. Or maybe if you're someone who was regaining your fitness or regaining some of the habits that you used to, you know, really love in college or even before that, as you were younger, you're starting to notice that time is undefeated and that your body has changed. And sometimes we can really scrutinize ourselves and sometimes we can be really unkind to ourselves, which really in a lot of ways, I tend to find that the people that are really unkind to others and make comments about other people's bodies are really the people that are hurting the most. And they just aren't grown enough to accept that one, it's not okay to comment on other people's bodies, regardless. I think that's just like 101 being a good human, right? We don't comment on, on other people's bodies, especially because we don't have permission. Like, it's just not cool. It's just not cool to do. It's not a flex. It's just, it's weird. It's weird ass behavior. Let's just call it what it is, right? So that's, that's the first piece. And I think the second piece is also just really noticing that as we sort of accept the change in our lives and become aware of how we look at our body and how we compare our bodies to others, what I thought was really cool about the way that this story ran is that we're we're starting to look at nuance and we're starting to be more inclusive of differences. I literally just got done and you know my son has been really loving books before bed and, and one of the books that we were able to read was you know everyone has a body and it talked about how all of us come into this world having different bodies, different abilities and it's really not our role 
to engage in judgment and other things like that. And I think what was really cool is, is like helping my my son who is not even two yet, just mold his little brain around concepts that we as adults just really struggle with. And so we were looking at, I was looking at that and I was like, all right, looking at some of the comments that came up about, you know, what he looked like with his shirt off. And for those who have been engaged in the YouTube channel and been engaged with Spotify video, like I'm going to go ahead as always to share my screen. And for those who are just looking at audio, like I want to encourage you to continue to listen because I'm going to do my best to obviously get, get an image out for you as you're listening. So Men's Health literally just did an article on this, and I thought it was really cool because what I'm enjoying about Men's Health is they're starting to look at the nuance. And as a writer myself, as a nutrition advisor, like we are really trying to promote the nuance of what happens when we look at overall health. And inside of this article, the, 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 the article is labeled, Dad Bods Are Hot and These NFL Stars Are Proving It. <laughs> And what what I think is funny, because sometimes when we look at like the concept of a dad bod, sometimes it's not something, it's something that is joked about. But if we really get down to the meat of it, whether you are someone who is incredibly aware about how you think about your body or how you feel about your body, and you feel like you have a good relationship with your body, let's call, let's call a spade a spade. When your body changes and you didn't intend for it to change, and when you look at yourself in the mirror, and sometimes maybe you don't recognize that person in the mirror, maybe there are some things that have happened in, your, happened in your body where you're like, I really would love to change that. Sometimes we can be unkind to ourselves. And so when we look at dad bods, sometimes there are things that are joked about or celebrated. But I think under that, there is going to be some pain that's attached to like, I don't really like how my body looks. Now, that's not even to say or to hold space for other people commenting on your body. And that's what I think is extremely weird about this. So I ended up reading the story and I felt like Men's Health did a really phenomenal job at taking a look at some of the nuance behind what happens, not only just inside of how we look at our bodies, but even looking at professional athletes who have competed at the highest of levels, their humanity and in, in how they're operating. And so I'm going to scroll down a little bit at like the actual post. And so, you know, Pat Mahomes was able to have some, uh, some laughter and able to joke about it. He had responded in the video and after people were going in on him saying he had a, he had a beer belly, he was bloated. It's just, it's just weird behavior on the internet that just really oftentimes bothers me. Cause it's like a lot of these people who are commenting such unkind things are always the same types of people who also have their account on private, which again is weird. It's just weird behavior. And so Pat Mahomes had uh, some fun with it. He's like, yo, why they have to do me like that? Hashtag dad bod season. So like he had some fun with it. But I think at the at the core, no one really wants to have their body talked about. And that's where I think I want to encourage us inside of this two part series of understanding what it means to be healthy, because health is a spectrum. Right. And and the, the core pillars of our podcast is taking a look at how you sleep, making sure that you're getting quality how you eat, making sure that you have access to quality, making sure that you are navigating quality, how you move, same thing, quality movement, and then also how you feel, how you think, right? Allowing yourself to create tools that provide you with quality opportunities to take care of your mental health and quality opportunities to continue to boost your performance from that standpoint, right? So these are our core pillars. And I think that is extremely, there's a lot of nuance when it when it comes to that because it really doesn't have a lot to do with how your body looks because there's going to be a great deal of nuance. And we're going to tackle it in part two a little bit more of the science and the history of the BMI because I know that's a really big hot topic, but it kind of it kind of pushes me into this next thing that really pissed me off. Now, again, big shout out to, to Men's Health. I you know there's a reason why I'm on their advisory staff as their nutrition expert because I deeply believe in what they're doing because they're starting to get away from images of the washboard abs and things like that. And they're starting to be more inclusive of the nuance of how people come into the world and how they operate and how they hold space in the world. And I think that piece is, 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 is really cool. What is really scary to me is the amount of people who not only engage in a lot of the fat phobia in the world of the fat shaming, but how comfortable they are with it too. So I'm going to go ahead once again and show you a post that I thought was really cool of addressing the limitations of the BMI and addressing the the term of obesity and how 
people who are labeled as obese and people who are in bigger bodies can still live healthy lifestyles. And that's where I think taking a look at some of the athletes that we've seen in the world, we've, we've been able to see some of the best athletes in the world that likely if we look at them and put them on the BMI chart, they're going to be considered obese because we're not really taking a look at bone density. We're not really taking a look at muscle mass. So like there's a lot of nuance when it, when it comes to this. And I think as I looked at this post, it really pissed me off. And I was like, you know what? Looking at what I wanted to do today, like I have to talk about this. So there's a post that went out on, on behalf of Men's Health that came up that was labeled, I'm big and strong, right? So living in a bigger body, living in a fat body. And some of the comments that came down, I was just like, yo, like why? <laughs> the amount of privilege that you have saying and what you just said it is, is flooring to me. And, and, it, and it honestly really just pisses me off because it shows me not only how blind you are to the nuance of what happens with people's, with people's lives, and how they interact with their habits and how they interact with their food, their movement, their body, all that stuff. But also you're going to come out and just outwardly say this. And so I'm going to read you a couple comments that pissed me off that pushed me into like, you know what? I think it's time to start talking about this. It's the month of Feb. Oftentimes we are thinking just from the nutrition perspective, like heart health and, and, and navigating things that are going to help you in your overall health. And I felt like this month would be a really good opportunity to talk about nuance when we're discussing health issues, right? And so let's look at the first comment. Oh, so yes, promote obesity as, as in quotes, empowering. How about enabling? Obesity is not, is not genetic. Obesity is a byproduct of poor choices, inflammation, and toxicity. This is wild. Like, dude, your comment is wild. Like what? <laughs> the, the amount of like... <clears throat> How blind you are to nuance when this when it when it comes to this, I think is just so so amazing to me. Let's look at the second comment. Now change your name to men's unhealth mag. This dude thought he was slick. I don't I don't I thought it was a dumbass comment too. Now let's look at the, the third comment. Promote being fit, not being fat. Stop promoting lazy people who are obese. That that's a wild stretch, dude. That is a wild stretch for you to come out and say that. Obesity is the number one strain on healthcare. Yeah, anyone who labels, who throws that into Google knows that, okay? Let's go even more down the line. Fit men, are, fit, fit men are more fertile while fat men are more likely to be infertile. Same for women. Ugh. This is kind of what bothers me in, in the sphere of how we absorb information on social media. Because any, anyone who out there who has access to a phone or to a computer or just access to the freaking internet, you can literally come out and say whatever you want to say and have no repercussions to how that's going to make others feel and no repercussions to like if what you're saying is actually evidence-based. Do you have the credibility to say what you're about to say? And, and can you do it in a way that is not only educating but also done in a way that's like, let's just call it what it is, just kind. Like, can you be kind on the internet? And this is what was really, really bothering me too about just like how we treat people in different bodies. Because if we look at some of the most elite level athletes, each and every one of them are going to come in different bodies. And I think what, what this really comes up for me is, you know, when, when I was working in professional baseball, you know, 2018, 19, and almost into 20, I started to ask some of the questions because oftentimes when I would work with an athlete, some of the direction that I would get is, hey, like this person needs to in increase their performance. They need to get back uh, on the field from injury. And it'd be, it also does, it'd also be nice if we help them to shed a couple pounds, right? So that's mostly a lot of the type of consults, if you will, that I would get. So in talking to them and understanding some of the athletes, like not only am I because a lot of these athletes are in development. Like, not only am I making sure, like, all right, does this person have access to food, snacks? Do they understand what to get? Like, is there access to education and understanding and also just basics of just, like, food, right? So that's, like, the first thing. Like, let me understand that. And then the other thing that I found, even just in that realm, is where the complex was located, it was located in a food desert. There really wasn't access to a lot of really great food. Like, it was mostly fast food restaurants. Uh, convenience stores and things like that. So there's nuance to this. All right. So when we go out and just like shame people's bodies and what they look like without taking a look at their environment, 
where, how they, how they've grown up. Do they understand their education level? Like they're just so much nuance. And then when you say outlandish, dumbass things like that, it just, it, it should piss all of us off. Right. So, so going back to this example, as I started to work with athletes, I started to ask myself the question of like, okay, so like, let's look at the physiology of a catcher versus a pitcher versus someone who's in the infield versus someone who's in the outfield, right? So this is working with elite level athletes. I started to ask myself the question. I was like, you know what? Like, do we have science or stats as it pertains to the body fat percentage or, or body type of a catcher? Like, do we have that? Is, is there science to say that catchers need to be more lean? Therefore they're more athletic. Like, I just started to ask those questions. And so as I went to our sports science team, we started to dive into the literature, started to dive into like understanding, just finding an understanding to the answer that I posed. And what came back, I thought was was extremely relative to the nuance of when we look at someone who's an athlete, or we look at someone who is returning to play, uh, or just returning to a given sport or returning to any sort of exercise regimen, right? So a lot of us who are busy, some of us might be busy parents, we might be busy in our work and our businesses. Sometimes we get off our routine. So when we return back to it, like there's there's some nuance in some of the our general population as well, obviously. So what I found was pitchers who usually had some more meat on their bones, if you will, are also the ones that just from a physiology standpoint, like they're they're going to need to generate a great deal of power. So sometimes they're going to have bigger body sizes. Now, if you look at the infield and the outfield, those positions require a bit more athleticism. They require fast twitch muscles. They require a lot more movement. So we might need someone who has the body type and the abilities to, to facilitate the movements that they need. And it was the same thing with the catchers. And what it, what it helped me to understand is, there, is that there's nuance to not only just our professional athletes, but that kind of stemmed into how I work with some of these athlete entrepreneurs and how I work with some of these other individuals that are looking to regain the habits and the rituals that they wanted to get back to. Because what it pointed out for me is really understanding not only is there a value in individualizing the type of work and care that you do with someone, but it's also equally as important as being able to help to re-educate them because of what's happening on the freaking internet right now. Because even as we celebrate the, the, the dad bod in this case and Pat Mahomes and uh, some of the other, I think Jason Kelsey might have had uh, some pieces in there. Like I know he jumped out of a press box uh, the game before that um, and they were celebrating just his body as well. But I think one thing that we, we need to understand and to notice is that as we look at our bodies, as we look at our overall health, you can be in a different and a bigger body and still be navigating some of the things that you need to navigate from a health perspective and a performance perspective. Now, if your body has changed and it's and it's been and it's done so in a way where you've un, where it's been unintended, yeah, then I think some education needs to happen. Then we need to take a bigger look into how you sleep, how you move, how you eat, how you think, and how you feel, and some of the other factors and root causes of what happens when there are some unintended changes that happen. But it's not black and white. There's nuance. There's absolute gray area. So I wanted to start the conversation inside of part one to remind you of a couple of things. We all have different bodies. It's never okay to comment on another. It's just not. It's weird behavior. Stop doing it. And I think the third thing is let's also understand the science and the history of where we've come from and why we do what we do and helping you to understand how you can take some of the information and make some of the educated decisions for yourself moving forward. And I want to end here once again. Let's stop calling it a dad bod, but let's refer to it as a father figure. <laughs> I've always loved that. All right, y'all catch you on the next one. Like I said, we're going to dive a deeper into the science of the BMI, some history of the BMI and helping you to understand like what it actually means to be obese, like what we're looking at from a science perspective, some of the root causes and some of the nuance of what happens with that root cause so that you have the information that you need to make decisions for yourself where you feel comfortable about where you are in your trajectory and your health. All right, y'all. Later. <laughs>